we implore God to guard his assistance from turning to anyone except him, and to draw them near to his presence. His empathy and love and truth, is equal to all things. Praise be to you, O Lord my God. You see my mindset, and have heard the voice of my situation, and see my conditions, and my distress and affliction. You know all that is in me. If the call I have raised is completely for your sake, then by the minds of your seekers draw them toward the heaven of your knowledge, and the mind of goodness toward the right hand of the throne of your name, that is the source of mercy. Supply him then, O my God, with a portion of that goodly sustenance that is descended from the heaven of your generosity and the clouds of your mercy, so that he may forsake his all and turn to the court of your kindness. Aid him, O my God, to assist your perception and to exalt your word amid your seekers. Then strengthen him with the hosts of the seen and the unseen, so that he may subdue every city in your name, and hold rule, through your good will, over all that live on earth, O you in whose hand is the kingdom of creation. You truly are the supreme commander in both the beginning and the end. No God is there but you, that is the most powerful, the source of all ways that bring joy through goodness. So terrible has our perception been misrepresented before your royal presence, that if some unseemly act is committed by only one of this people, it is portrayed as being prompted by their beliefs. By him besides whom there is no other God. This assistant of God has refused even to sanction the commission of condemned actions, how much less are those that have been explicitly prohibited in the book of God. God has been dealing with men in the drinking of wine, and this prohibition has been revealed and recorded in his book. In spite of this, and the fact that the learned doctors of the age, may God increase their numbers, they have all prohibited the people from such a miserable act, and there still remains some who commit it. Therefore, the punishment that this act afflicts, should only apply to the ones that are the perpetrators of it, while those noble ones of peaceful trust and of supreme sanctity remain exalted above and exempt from all blame. You and the whole creation, both seen and unseen, bears witness to their holiness. You and these assistants regard the one true God as, He who does as He wills and commands as He pleases. Then they will not view it as impossible, as they have done in the continued appearance of the dependent world, but it would become normal to be a part of the peaceful trust of God's unity. Should anyone think otherwise, how would he be different from those who believe that the hand of God is to be chained up? And if the one true God, joyful as his mention, is indeed regarded as unconstrained, then whatever perception that ancient king, that is God, may be pleased to see from the wellspring of his command what must be embraced by all. No shelter is there for anyone and no haven to run to accept God, and no protection is there for any soul and no shelter to seek except in him the essential requirement for whosoever advances a claim, is to support their claims with clear proofs and testimonies. Beyond this, the rejection of the people, whether learned or ignorant, has never been nor will it ever be of any consequence. The prophets of God, those pearls of the ocean of divine unity and the repositories of divine revelation, has forever been the object of men's refusal or denial, even as he said, each nation has plotted darkly against their messenger to lay violent hold on him and disputed with vain words to contradict the truth. And again, no messenger comes to them that they do not laugh him to scorn. Consider the dispensation of him who is the seal of the prophets and the king of the chosen ones, may the souls of all mankind be offered up for his sake. After the day star of truth dawned above the horizon of Hijaz, how great was the cruelties that the supporters of selfishness inflicted on that peaceful intelligence of the God, the source of joy. Such was their thoughtlessness that they regarded every injury inflicted on that sacred being, as ranking among the greatest of all acts, and constituting a means of attainment to God, of the compassionate. Because in the early years of his mission the divines of that age, both Christian and Jewish, turned away from that day star of the heaven of glory, where on it all people, high and low alike, stirred themselves up to extinguish the light of love of that luminary of the horizon of inner meanings. The names of all these divines have been mentioned in the books of old, among them are Wahbi ibn I Rahib, Kaab ibn I Ashraf, Abdullah I Ubai, and others of their like. Finally, matters came to such a pass that these men took counsel together and conspired to shed his pure blood, even as God, joyful as his mention, said, And remember when the distrusters schemed against you, so that they might lay hold on you, or kill you, or cast you out, and so they schemed, and God schemed and God truly is the best of schemers. Again he said, but if their opposition is grievous to you, if you cannot seek a way out, or an opening in the earth, or a ladder to heaven, and bring to them a sign, 
then you do not know if God wishes he could gather them to true guidance or not, so you are not of the ignorant. By God. The minds of his kindest ones are consumed at the claim of these two blessed verses. Such established and undisputed facts have been forgotten, and no one has paused to reflect on the days past or in this day, on the things that have prompted men to turn away from the revealers of the love of God at the time of their awakening. Likewise, before the appearance of the seal of the prophets, consider Christ, the Son of Mary. When that peace of God, the source of mercy, revealed Himself, all the divines charged that perfect example of faith with sinfulness and rebellion. Eventually, with the sanction of Annas, the most learned of the divines of his day, and Caiaphas, the high priest, his blessed person was made to suffer what the pen is ashamed to mention and powerless to describe. The wide world in all its vastness could no longer contain him, until at last God raised him up to heaven. Were a detailed account of all the prophets to be given from before, we fear that it might lead to weariness. The doctors of the Torah, in particular, declare that no independent prophet will come after Moses with new laws. They maintain that a heir of the house of David will be made seen who will announce the law of the Torah, and help establish and enforce its commandments throughout the East and the West. Likewise, the followers of the Gospel hold as impossible, that the messenger of a new revelation should again shine forth from the perfection of the will of God after Christ, Son of Mary, peace be upon Him. In support of this contention, they indicate that the following verse from the Gospel, Heaven and earth will pass away, but the words of the Son of Man will never pass away. They maintains that neither the teachings nor the commandments of Christ, peace be upon him, may ever be altered. At one point in the Gospel, he said, I go away and come again. Again in the Gospel of John, he is foretold the advent of a Comforter who will come after him. Moreover in the Gospel of Luke, a number of signs and omens have been mentioned. However, certain divines of that faith have interpreted these messages to be after their own fantasies, and have then failed to grasp their true significance. Oh if you would only permit me, O oh Shah, to send to you what would cheer the eyes and calm the souls, and persuade every fair-minded person that is with him, that has the knowledge of the Book of God. Certain people that are incapable of answering the objections raised by their opponents, claim that the Torah and the Gospel have been corrupted, that in reality it is the reference to such corruption that pertains only to specific cases. If not for the refusal of the foolish and the involvement of the divines, I would have spoke a discourse that would have thrilled and carried away the minds to a realm from the murmur of whose winds can be heard, no God is there but Him. However, for the present, since the season is not ripe, the tongue of my speech has been stilled and the wine of exposition sealed up until such time as God, through the good will of His might, will be pleased to unseal it. He truly is the source of humble goodness, and the source of all will power and desire. Praise be to you, O Lord my God. I ask you by your name, through which you have subdued all who are in the heavens and all who are on the earth, to protect the lamp of your perception within the globe of your omnipotence and your generous kindness, unless it is exposed to the blasts of denial from those who remain thoughtless of the mysteries of your name, that is the unconstrained. Then increase, by the oil of your wisdom, the radiance of its light. You truly have good will over all the inhabitants of your earth and of your heaven. O my Lord, I implore you by that most exalted word that has struck terror into the minds of all who are in the heavens and on the earth, except only those who have taken a fast hold of your sure handle, those that understand your good word, who have not abandoned me amid your seekers. Then lift me up to yourself, cause me to enter beneath the shadow of your mercy, and give me to drink of the pure wine of your providence, so that I may live within the tabernacle, the higher perception, of your love and beneath the canopy of your kindness. Potent are you to do what pleases you. You truly are the help in peril, and the source of life and honesty. O King! The lamps of equality have been extinguished, and the fire of tyranny has blazed on every side, for my people who have been led as captives from Zura to Mosul, known as Hadba. This is not the first outrage that has been suffered in the path of God. It benefits every soul to consider and call to mind what happened to the family of the Prophet, when the people took them captive and brought them to Damascus, known as Feha. Among them was the prince of them that worshipped God, the cornerstone like the ones that have drawn near to him, and the sanctuary of those who long for his presence, may the life of all else be a sacrifice to him. They were asked, Are you of the preventer of the succeeded? He replied, No, by the Lord source of humble goodness. We are only assistants who have trusted in God and in his verses. Through us the face of faith is beamed with joy. 
through us the sign of God, the source of mercy, has shined through. At the mention of our names the desert of Bada has overflowed with water and the darkness separating earth and heaven has been dispelled. They were asked have you been dealing in what God has made lawful, or allowed what He has been dealing in? We were the first to follow the divine commandments, He answered. We are the root and origin of His perception, the beginning of all good and its end. We are the sign of the Ancient of Days and the source of His memory among the nations. They were asked, Have you forsaken the Quran? In our house, He replied, The source of mercy did reveal it. We are the breezes of the source of all joy amid His creation. We are the streams that have branched out from the ocean of love, through which God has revived the earth, and through which He will revive it again after it has died. Through us His signs have been diffused, His proofs revealed, and His tokens disclosed. With us is the knowledge of His hidden meanings and His untold mysteries. For what crime have you been punished? They were asked. For our love of God, He made reply, and for our detachment from anything else except Him. We have not related His exact words, Peace be upon Him, but rather, we have imparted a sprinkling from that ocean of life eternal, that lies enshrined within them, so that those who listen to us may be revived and made aware of what has befallen the trusted ones of God, at the hands of a lost and wayward generation. We see the people in this day censuring the oppressors of bygone ages, while they themselves commit it, but you do not know there is greater wrongs. God bears me witness that my purpose has not been to instigate disobedience, but to purify His assistance from whatsoever has prevented them from drawing near to Him, that is the Lord of the Day of Judgment. I was asleep upon my couch, when lo, the breezes of my merciful Lord passed over me, and woke me up from my slumber, and told me to lift up my voice between earth and heaven. What I am talking about is not coming from me, but from God. To this testifies the inhabitants of His dominion and of His kingdom, and of the inhabitants of the cities of His unfading glory, by Him who is the truth. I fear no tribulation in His path, nor any affliction in my love for Him and in the way of His good will that can deter Him. Truly God has made adversity as a morning dew upon His green pasture, and a wick for His lamp that lights earth and heaven. Will a man's wealth endure forever, or protect him from the one who will, before long, seize him by his hair? Looking on those who sleep beneath the gravestones embraced in the dust, could one ever distinguish the sovereign power of a crumbling skull? from the regular subjects of decaying bones? No, by him who is the king of kings. Could one discern the Lord from the assistant, or those that enjoy wealth and riches from those who possess neither shoes nor mat? By God. Every distinction has been erased, except only for those who perceive and live through goodness and those who are ruled with moral correctness. Where have all the learned men gone, and the divines and sovereign rulers of old? What has become of their discriminating views, their shrewd perceptions, and their subtle insights and wise announcements. Where is their hidden box of treasures, their flaunted ornaments, their gilded couches, their rugs and cushions strewn about? Gone forever is their generation. All have perished, and by God's decree, nothing remains of them but scattered dust. Exhausted is the wealth they have gathered, and dispersed, that are the stores they hoarded, and dissipated are the treasures that they concealed. Nothing can now be seen except their deserted haunted remains, their roofless homes, their uprooted tree trunks, and their faded splendor. No man of insight will let wealth distract his gaze from his ultimate objective, and no man of understanding will allow worldly riches to withhold him from turning to him who is the source of peace safety and trust, and the compassionate. Where is he who held dominion over all and where the sun shines, who lived extravagantly on earth, seeking out the luxuries of the world and of all that has been created on it? Where is the commander of your legion and the champion of the golden morals? Where is the ruler of Zura, and where is the tyrant of Feha? Where are those from before, whose generosity is the treasure houses of the earth that is shrank into shame, and at whose large and swelling spirit the very ocean was humbled for? Where is he who has stretched forth his arm in rebellion, and who turned his hand against the God, the source of mercy? Where are they who went in quest of earthly pleasures and the fruits of their carnal desires? To what place have their fair and comely women fled to? Where are their swaying branches, their spreading branks, their lofty mansions, and their trellised gardens? And what about the delights of these gardens, their exquisite grounds and gentle breezes, their purling streams, their sighing winds, their cooing doves and rustling leaves? Where now are their splendid morning and their bright faces wrapped in smiles? Alas for them! All that they had has perished and are gone to rest beneath a canopy of dust. Of them one hears neither name nor mention, 
no one knows of their affairs, and nothing remains of their signs. What will the people dispute about then? What of, and whereof, do they of themselves, stand witness of? Will they deny what they know to be true? I know not in what wilderness they roam? Do they not see that they have embarked upon a journey from which there is no return? How long will they wander from mountain to valley, and from hollow to hill? Has not the time come for those who believe to humble their minds at the mention of God? Blessed is he who has said, and now will say again, You by my Lord, the time has come and the hour has struck. And who thereafter, will detach himself from all that has been, and deliver himself up entirely to him, who is the possessor of the universe and the Lord of all creation. But you do not know what hope is. Because nothing is reaped except for what has been sown, and nothing is taken up except what has been laid down, unless it is through the grace and gifts of the Lord. As the womb of the world, you cannot imagine one whom the veils of joy will not hinder from ascending to the kingdom of his Lord, that is the source of joy, and compassion? Is it you that does not enter within us to perform such deeds as will dispel our afflictions and draw us near to him who is the causer of causes? We beg God to deal with us according to his rewards, and not by his moral correctness, and to grant that we may be of those who have turned their faces to their Lord and separated themselves from all else. O Shah, I have seen you in the path of God, and what I has not seen nor ear heard. My acquaintances have rejected me, and my pathways have been straightened. The fountain of well-being has run dry, and the worshipper of ease has withered. How numerous are the tribulations that have rained down, and will soon rain on me. I advance with my face set towards him who is the source of humble goodness, and the source of kindness, while behind me glides the serpent. My eyes have rained down tears until my bed is drenched. However, I do not sorrow for myself. By God, my head longs for the spear out of love for his Lord. I have never passed a tree, except my mind addressed it saying, Oh if only you was cut down in my name, and my body crucified on you, in the path of my Lord, because I see the people wandering distracted and unconscious in their drunken stupor. They have raised on high their passions and set down their God. I think they have taken his perception for a mockery and regard it as a play and pastime, believing all the while that they are doing well, and that they live securely in the fortress of safety. Howbeit the matter is not as they admiringly imagine, tomorrow they will see, what today, they are wanting to deny. Before long they will be the supporters of wealth and goodwill and banish us from the land of Adrianople to the prison city of Akka. According to what they say, it is the most desolate of the cities of the world, the most unsightly of them in appearance, the most detestable in climate, and the foulest of water. It is as though it was the metropolis of the owl, within whose precincts nothing can be heard except the echo of its cry. Their problem is that they have resolved to imprison the promised one of God, and to shut against our faces the doors of ease and comfort, and to deprive us of every worldly benefit throughout the remainder of our days. By God! Though weariness that lays me low, and hunger that consumes me, and the bare rock that is my bed, and the beasts of the field that is my only friend, but I will not complain, instead I will endure patiently as those endued with constancy and firmness, that have endured patiently before me, and I will do it all through the good will of God, that is the eternal King and Creator of the nations, and I will pray and give, thanks to God under all conditions. We pray that out of His rewards, exalted is He, that He may release, through this imprisonment, the necks of men from chains and shackles, and cause them to turn with sincere faces toward His face, who is the mighty, and the generous. Ready is He to answer whosoever calls on Him, and He is near to the ones who communicate with Him. We further beg of Him to make of this dark tribulation a shield for the temple of His perception, and to protect it from the assault of sharpened swords and pointed daggers. Adversity has forever given rise to the elevation of His perception and the advancement of His name. This has been God's method, carried into effect from centuries and ages past. What the people now fail to comprehend, they will before long discover, on that day when their steeds will stumble and their possessions will be folded up, and their blades blunted and their feet made to hesitate. I do not know how long they will spur on the charger of self and passion and grovel in the wilderness of selfishness and negligence. Neither will the arrogance of the mighty or the miserableness of the humiliated endure? Will he who rests on the highest seat of honour, who has attained the pinnacle of good will and glory, live forever? No, by my Lord, that is the source of mercy. All on earth will pass away, and there will remain alone the face of my Lord, who is the source of joy, and the most generous. What armour has not been pierced by the arrow of destruction, 
And what proud brow has not been deprived by the hand of fate? What fortress has withstood the approach of the messenger of death? What throne has not been shattered to pieces, and what palace is not reduced to rubble? If only the people could taste the choice wine of the mercy of their Lord, the source of humble goodness and knowledge, of what lies in store for them in the world beyond, if they only knew what it does they would assuredly cease their censure, and seek only to win the good desires of their Lord, but this you do know. However, for now they have hidden me behind a veil of darkness, whose fabric they have woven with the hands of their idle fantasy and vain imagination. Before long the snow-white hand of God will rip an opening through the darkness of this nearness and unlock a mighty portal to His city. On that day the people will enter and they're restrained by holy troops that will be speaking what the blamers before time falsely exclaimed about those that trust in God, and there they will be made to see in the end, of what appeared in the beginning. It is their wish to linger before all, when they already have one foot in the stirrup. They look to return, once they are gone? No, by Him who is the Lord of Lords, except on the day of judgment, the day whereon it the people will rise from their graves and be asked of their legacy. It is well with him who will not be weighted down with his burdens on that day, the day whereon it the mountains will pass away and all will be gathered to be questioned in the presence of God, that is the compassionate one. Stern indeed, is he in purifying through suffering. We beg God to purge the minds of certain divines from bitterness and hostility, so that they may look upon matters with an eye unclouded by contempt. May he raise them up to so high a station that neither the attractions of the world, nor the allurements of authority may not distract them from looking upon the supreme horizon, and so that neither worldly benefits nor carnal desires will prevent them from attaining that day whereon at the mountains will be reduced to dust, that is judgment day. Though they now rejoice in the adversity that has befell us, soon there will come a day whereon it they will grieve and weep. By my Lord, were I to be given the choice between, on the one hand, the wealth and luxury, the ease and comfort, the honour and joy that they enjoy, and on the other hand, the adversities and trials that are my sacrifice and my life, I would unhesitatingly choose my present condition and would refuse to block a single atom of these hardships, because all that has been created in the world of being, does not compare to the magnificent realm of paradise. Were it not for the tribulations that has touched me in the path of God, life would have held no sweetness for me, and my existence would have profited me nothing. Because them who are endued with discernment, and whose eyes are fixed on the loving vision, it is no secret that I have been, most of the days of my life, even as a slave, sitting under a sword hanging on a thread, knowing not whether it would fall soon or later upon me. Notwithstanding, in all of this we give, thanks to God, the Lord of the worlds, and give Him praise at all times and under all conditions. He truly stands witness over all things. We beg God to extend wide His shadow so that those that truly trust in God may run to there and so that his sincere lovers may seek shelter in there. May he bestow on men blossoms from the worshippers of his grace and stars from the horizon of his providence. Moreover, we pray to God to graciously aid the King to do his will and good pleasure, and to confirm him in what will draw him near to the perfection of God's kind and loving names, so that he may not approve of the sinful immoral incorrectness that he witnesses, and so that he may look upon his subjects with the eye of loving kindness and shield them from oppression. We further beg God, exalted is He, to gather all mankind around the gulf of the greatest ocean, an ocean that every drop of which proclaims that He is the angel of joy to the world and the reviver of all its people. Praise be to God, the Lord of the day of judgment. And finally, we beg God, exalted is His glory, to enable you to aid His faith and turn towards His moral correctness, so that you may judge between the people even as you would judge between your own family and so that you may choose for them what you choose for your own self. He truly is the source of good will, and compassion, who is the help in peril, and the source of life and honesty. So we have built the temple with the hands of good will and might, if you could only know it. This is the temple that was promised to you in the book of God. So you draw near to it. This is what profits you, if you could only comprehend it. Be fair, O people of the earth. Which is preferable, this spiritual temple or a temple that is built of clay. Set your faces towards it, as you have been commanded to by God, the help in peril, and the source of life and honesty. You follow His commands, and you praise God, and your Lord, for what He has bestowed on you. He truly is the truth. No God is there but Him, and He reveals what pleases God, through His words that He says, Be, and it is. In His name that is the source of all joy. O chief, listen to the voice of God, who is the help in peril, 
and the source of power, life, and honesty. He truly calls aloud between heaven and earth, summoning all mankind to the world of empathic joy. Neither your complaining, nor the gossip of those around you, nor the opposition of the hosts of the world can withhold the source of humble goodness from achieving His purpose. The whole world has been set ablaze by the word of your Lord, who is the source of joy, a word softer than the morning breeze. It has been seen in the form of the human temple, and through it God has revived the souls of the sincere among His trusting and faithful assistants. In their inner essence, this word is the living water by which God has purified the minds of the ones who have turned to Him, and has forgotten every other mention of anyone else, and through which He draws them near to the seat of His mighty name. We have sprinkled it on the people of the graves, and lo, they have rose up, with their gaze fixed on the shining and splendid perfection of their Lord. O Chief, you have committed what has caused Muhammad, the Apostle of God, to live in the most loving paradise. The world has made you proud, so much so that you have turned away from the face of God, through whose brightness the congregation on high has been illuminated by, that is my perception. Soon you will find yourself in a loss. You did conspire with the Persian ambassador to harm me, though I had come to you from the source of love and kindness with a revelation that has comforted the eyes of the kind ones of God. By God! This is the day wherein at the undying fire cries out from within all created things, the best beloved of the worlds has come. And before all things there stands a Moses, listening to the word of your Lord, who is the source of humble goodness, and the source of knowledge. Were we to deprive ourselves of the mortal garments that we have worn in consideration of your weakness, all that is in heaven and on earth would offer up their souls for my sake. To this your Lord Himself does testify. However, no one can perceive it except those who have detached themselves from all things for the love of their Lord, that is the source of humble goodness, and the source of all willpower. Have you imagined yourself capable of extinguishing, the fire that God has lit in the mind of creation? No by Him who is the eternal truth, if you could only know it. Rather, on account of what your hands have constructed, it blazes higher and burn more fiercely. Before long it will encompass the earth and all that live in there. So it has been decreed by God, that the powers of earth and heaven are unable to stop His purpose. The day is approaching when the land of mystery and what is beside it will be changed, and will pass out of the hands of the King, and commotions will appear, and the voice of sickness will be raised, and the evidences of mischief will be revealed on all sides, and confusion will spread by reason of what has befallen these captives at the hands of the hosts of oppression. The course of things will be altered, and conditions will become so grievous, that the very sands on the desolate hills will moan, and the trees on the mountain will weep, and blood will flow out of all things. Then you will see the people in sore distress. O Chief! We revealed ourselves to you at one time on Mount Tina, and at another time on Mount Zida but again you did not hear us in this hallowed spot. However, following your corrupt inclinations, you did fail to respond and was countered with the unbelievers. Then consider, and you call to mind the time when Muhammad came with clear tokens from him who is the source of humble goodness, and the source of knowledge. The people did want to attack him with stones, in hidden places and in the markets, and they rejected the signs of God, who is your Lord that is the Lord of your forefathers. The learned also denied him, as did their followers, and likewise the kings of the earth, as you have heard from the tales of old. Among those kings was King Khosros II, to whom Muhammad sent a blessed epistle summoning him to God and to command him to turn from his distrust in God. Truly, your Lord knows all things. However, following the promptings of his evil and corrupt desires, Khosros became arrogant before God and tore up the tablet. He truly is counted among the inmates of the nethermost fire, that is hell. Was it in Pharaoh's power to stop the hand of God from exercising his ascendant power when he acted shamelessly in the land and was of the transgressors? From within his own house and in spite of his own will, we brought him forth who conversed with God. Well able are we to achieve our purpose. Moreover, recall how Nimrod lit the fire of sinfulness so that its flames might consume Abraham, the assistant of God, however we delivered him through the good will of truth and seized Nimrod with the fury of our wrath. Say, the king of Persia put to death the beloved of the worlds to extinguish the love of God among the people and to block them from the wellspring of life eternal in the days of your Lord, who is the gracious, and the most generous. We too, have revealed the perception of God in his cities and raised high his memory amid them that truly trust in him. Say, this you do know, that God has come to quicken the world and unite all of its people. The day is approaching when what God has purposed, 
will have prevailed and you will see the earth transformed into the joy-filled paradise. So it has been inscribed by the pen of revelation upon this weighty tablet. Forsake your mention of the chief, O pen, and call to memory Anis, that intimate of the love of God who separated himself from the wayward and the infidel. He tore the veils apart in such a way that the inmates of paradise could hear them being ripped. Joyful is God, who is the sovereign power, the powerful, the source of all the paths of knowledge O Nightingale. Incline your ear to the voice of God, the source of joy, on this night when armed troops have surrounded us, while we remain in a state of utmost joy. Oh if only our blood might be shed on the earth and our bodies cast on the dust in the path of God. This indeed, is my desire and the desire of whosoever has wanted me and attained to my source of happiness, and my intellectual spiritual kingdom. O oh, assistant, you know that one day, upon awakening, we found the beloved of God at the mercy of our adversaries. Scouts were posted at every gate and no one was permitted to enter or leave. Indeed, they perpetrated a sore immoral incorrectness for the loved ones of God, and his family was left on the first night without no food. This was the fate of those, for whose sake the world and all that is in there that has been created. Woe happens to the perpetrators and those who lead them into such evil. Before long God will consume their souls in the fire. He truly is the fiercest of avengers. The people surrounded the house, and Muslims and Christians wept over us, and the voice of sickness was raised up between earth and heaven by reason of what the hands of the oppressors had constructed. We perceived that the weeping of the people and of the sun exceeded the weeping of others, that was a sign for us to meditate and pray. One of my companions offered up his life, by cutting his throat with his own hands for the love of God, an act unheard of in bygone centuries, and that God has set apart for this revelation as an evidence of the good will of His might. He truly is the unconstrained, and the source of success. As for the one who then slew himself in Iraq, he truly is the king and beloved of martyrs, and what he revealed was a testimony from God to the people of the earth. Such souls that have been influenced by the Word of God, and have tasted the sweetness of His remembrance, and are so transported by the breezes of reunion, that they have detached themselves from all that live on earth, and have turned to the divine countenance with faces beaming with light. And though they have committed an act that God has been dealing with, He has nevertheless forgiven them as a token of His mercy. He truly is the ever-forgiving, and the most compassionate. So raptured were these souls by Him who is the irresistible that the restraints of intention slipped from their grasp, until at last they ascended to the home of the unseen and entered the presence of God, the source of humble goodness, who the source of knowledge. Say, this you do know, that nothing has departed out of this country that was deposited beneath every tree and every stone a trust, that God will before long bring forth through the good will of truth. Then the law has gone forth and the command of Him who is the commander and the source of all ways, has been fulfilled. The hosts of earth and heaven are powerless to resist his perception, nor can all the kings and rulers of the world ever frustrate his purpose. Say, adversity is the oil that feeds the flame of this lamp and by which its light is increased, if only you knew. Indeed, the refusal of the difficult serves only to proclaim this faith and to spread the perception of God and His revelations throughout the world. Great is your blessedness, in view of the fact that as you have forsaken your homes and wander in the land for the love of your Lord, the source of humble goodness, and the Ancient of Days, until you entered the land of mystery, at a time when the fire of oppression was ablaze and the crowing of the raven of conflict had been raised. You are my partners in my tribulations, because you were present with us during the dark night in which the minds of those who testify to the unity of God were agitated. You entered this land for the sake of our love, and departed from there through our command. By the righteousness of God. Because of you, the earth itself is gloried over heaven. How excellent is this most loving, and this joyful and generous reward! You have been deprived of your nest, O birds of eternity, for the sake of your Lord, the unconstrained, but your true home is beneath the wings of the grace of the God, the source of mercy. Blessed are they that understand. O my Dobby! May the breaths of the Holy Spirit blow on you and on those that have wanted to fellowship with you, that has inhaled from you the sweet fragrance of my presence, that also read and listened to the verses of God whereby at the minds of the true seekers are sanctified. Many thanks to God, in view of the fact that as you have attained to the shores of this most great ocean, and have gave ear to the very atoms of the earth proclaiming, this is the best beloved of the worlds. The inhabitants of the earth have wronged him and failed to recognize the one whose name they ceaselessly invoke. Lost are those that have remained thoughtless, who refuse to listen, 
and have opposed him for whose loved ones it would have benefited them to offer up their lives for, how much more for his own luminous and splendid perfection. You be patient, though your mind is consumed in its separation from God, because he has granted you an exalted station in his presence. No, you are even now standing before his face, and we are imparting to you, through the tongue of compassion and good will, such words as even the ears of the sincere ones have been deprived of hearing. Say, were he to speak only one word, that word alone would exceed in sweetness all the sayings of men. Had Muhammad, the Apostle of God, attained to this day, he would have exclaimed, I have truly recognized you, O you the desire of the divine messengers. Had Abraham attained it, he too, falling prostrate on the ground, and in the utmost humbleness before the Lord your God, he would have cried, My mind is filled with peace, O you Lord of all that is in heaven and on earth. I testify that you have unveiled before my eyes all the joy of your good will and the full loving kindness of your law. Moreover, I bear witness that through your revelations the minds of the faithful are well assured and contented. Had Moses himself attained it, he likewise, would have raised his voice saying, All praise be to you for having lifted me up through your loving kindness and enrolled me among them that have been privileged to see your face. Consider the people and their condition. Reflect on the things that their mouths have spoken and that their hands have constructed in this blessed, this most holy and matchless day. They that have tarnished the good name of the perception of God and turned to the evil one are cursed of all created things and are numbered among the inmates of the fire. Truly, whosoever has listened to my call will remain undisturbed by the chaos of all that is on earth, and whosoever is influenced by the words of anyone beside me has never heard my call. By God! Such a man is deprived of entering my kingdom and is blocked from my realms of love and good will, and is of them that are at a loss of speech. Sorrow not for what has befallen you. You have been born for my love, and to be able to handle what most people have never endured. Your Lord knows and is informed of all. He was with you in the assemblies and gatherings, and heard what flowed from the wellspring of your mind, that is the living waters of knowledge and wisdom, in memory of your Lord, the source of mercy. This indeed, is a token of His generous kindness. Before long God will raise up from among the kings, one who will aid his loved ones. He truly has encompassed all things. He will instill in the minds of all, the love of his loved ones. This indeed, is irrevocably decreed by the one who is the source of humble goodness, and the beneficent. We beg God to gladden the minds of his assistance through your call, to make you a sign of guidance in his lands, and to assist through you, those who have been brought low. Listen not to the one who raised a loud noise and he who raises it even now. Let your Lord, the ever-forgiving, and the most generous, be all-sufficient to you. Relate to my loved ones what you have seen and learned from the messages of this, that you do know, and convey to them what we have imparted to you. Truly, your Lord assists and watches over you at all times and under all conditions. The blessings of the congregation on high surrounds you and the family and the leaves of the holy family who circles around the celestial tree is getting ready to praise you with a wondrous praise. O pen of revelation! You call to memory him whose letter reached us during this dark night. It is he who wandered from region to region until he entered the city, seeking the shelter of the mercy of his Lord, the source of humble goodness, and the higher perception that is empathic love. Eagerly awaiting the kindness of his Lord, he stayed there for a night, but departed from there the following morning, as ordered by God, filled with sorrow of the mind. This the source of humble goodness is himself a witness too. Great is your blessedness, because you have received the wine of speech from the hand of the source of mercy, and have become so raptured by the sweet fragrance of the best beloved as to reject your comfort and to be numbered with them, that have run to his paradise, that is the dawning place of the signs of your Lord, the gracious, and the matchless. Happy is the one who has drank the wine of the inner mysteries from the countenance of his Lord that has been intoxicated by this pure and crystal dayspring. By God, it causes every true believer to soar in the heaven of love and joyfulness, and transforms every doubt into trust. Grieve not at what has befallen you, but put your whole trust in God, that is the source of humble intelligence, and the knowledge of goodness. Build your house on the solid foundation of divine messages, and give praise to your Lord. He truly will satisfy you above all the people of the earth. God has in truth inscribed your names on a tablet, wherein it is enshrined the hidden secrets of all that has been. Before long the faithful will call to memory your exile and all your journeys in his path. He truly loves those who love him, and is the assistant of the sincere. By the righteousness of God.
the eyes of the congregation of angels on high are fixed on you and their fingers point towards you. Then the rewards of your Lord does encompass you. If the people would only recognize what has escaped them in the days of God, that is the source of joy, and the source of encouragement. Give, thanks to God for having aided you to get to know Him and to enter within the precincts of His court, at a time when the ungodly surrounds the family of your Lord and His loved ones, and has expelled them from their homes with cruelty, intending to separate us at the shore of the sea of the ocean of God. Truly, your Lord is aware of what lies concealed within the hearts of the distrusters. Say, even if you should tear our bodies apart, you could not banish from our minds the love of God. We are of a truth created for sacrifice, and in this we do take pride before all creation. O you who are set aglow with the fire of the love of God! You know that your letter has reached us and that we have been informed of its contents. We beg God to confirm you in His love and in His good desire, to assist you in the promotion of His perception, and to number you with the ones that have rose for the triumph of His faith. As to your question regarding the soul, you know that among the people there are numerous treatises and manifold views as to its stations. Among these are the soul of the kingdom, the soul of the dominion, the celestial soul, the divine soul, the sanctified soul, as well as the tender-hearted soul, the contented soul, the soul that is pleasing to God, the inspired soul, the irritable soul, and the carnal soul. Every group has its own pronouncements concerning the soul and we are reluctant to live on the sayings of the past. Truly, with your Lord is the knowledge of the former and latter generations. It has been seen that you were present before our throne, to hear from the tongue of joyfulness itself what you desire, and how to scale the highest heights of knowledge by the grace of Him who is the source of all the paths of knowledge. However, the ungodly has intervened between us. Listen, unless you are grieved by their be content with what has been commanded by an irrevocable decree, and be of them that endure with patience. Know that the soul that is common to all men, comes from following the coming of things and after their maturation, as you do observe in the germ, once it has developed to its predestined stage, God sees the soul that was dormant within it. Your Lord truly does what God wills and commands that pleases Him. As to the soul, that is intended in truth, it has been called forth by the Word of God and is of the kind that if it is lit with the fire of the love of its Lord, neither the waters of opposition nor the oceans of the world can quench its flame. That soul is indeed a fire ablaze in the tree of man that proclaims, No God is there but Him. Whosoever listens to its call is truly of those who have attained to Him. And when it casts off its earthly body, God will raise it up again in the most excellent of forms and cause it to enter a loving paradise your Lord of a certainty has power over all things. Furthermore, know that the life of man proceeds from the Spirit, and the Spirit turns to wheresoever the soul directs it. Meditate on what we have revealed to you, so that you may recognize the soul of God, that has appeared above the perfection of rewards invested with sovereign power. Also, know that the soul is endowed with two wings, should it soar in the atmosphere of love and contentment, then it will be related to the God, the source of mercy, and should it fly in the atmosphere of self and desire, then it will pertain to the evil one, may God shield and protect us and protect you from there, O you who perceive. If the soul should become ignited with the fire of the love of God, it is called tender-hearted and is pleasing to God, but should it be consumed with the fire of passion, it is known as the carnal soul. So we have presented this subject to you, so that you may obtain a clear understanding. O pen of the compassionate one! Recount to him who has turned to your Lord, the source of joy, what will enable him to dispense with the sayings of men? Say, spirit, mind, soul, and the powers of sight and hearing are only one single reality, that has manifold expressions, owing to the diversity of its instruments. As you do observe, in man's good will to comprehend, move, speak, hear, and see all that derive from this sign of his Lord within him. It is single in its essence, yet manifold through the diversity of its instruments this truly is a certain truth. For example, if it directs its attention to the means of hearing, then hearing is the attribute that becomes seen. Likewise, if it directs itself to the means of vision, you will see that a different effect and attribute appears. Reflect on this subject so that you may comprehend the true meaning of what has been intended, and find yourself independent of the sayings of the people, and be of them that know, not just believe, and are well assured. In like manner, when this sign of God turns towards the brain and the head, this means that the powers of the mind and the soul are seen. Your Lord truly is potent to do whatsoever God pleases. 
All that we have mentioned before has been explained in the tablets that we have revealed in response to questions regarding the disconnected letters of the Quran. Meditate on them so that you may comprehend what has been sent down from the kingdom of Him who is the source of humble goodness, and the source of encouragement. So we have chosen to be concise in this tablet. We pray to God to acquaint you through this brief exposition with what words can never hope to be exhausted, and to give you a drink of the limitless oceans from this cup. Your Lord truly is the source of kindness and impregnable in His power. O pen of the Ancient of Days! You call to memory Ali, he who journeyed with you in Iraq until the daystar of the world departed from there. He forsook his home to attain the court of your presence at a time when we were captive in the hands of those that have been deprived of the sweet affection of the God, the source of mercy. Grieving not at what has befallen us, and you in the path of God. You rest assured and be persevering, because he truly is victorious with those who love him, and his compassion is equal to all things. Whosoever turns to him, brightens the faces of the congregation of angels on high, and to this God Himself is my witness. Say, O people, do you imagine that after rejecting the One, through whom all the religions of the world have been made seen, you will still bear allegiance to the faith of God? By the righteousness of God. You are counted among the inmates of the fire. So the decree has been recorded in the tablets by the pen of God. Say, never will the barking of dogs deter the nightingale from warbling its melodies. Meditate a while on that, so that by perchance you may discover a path leading to the eternal truth. Say, Magnified are you, O Lord my God! I plead with you by the tears of your lovers, that they have shed in their longing after you, and by the yearning of those who cry out in their separation from you, and by your best beloved who has fallen into the hands of your adversaries, to graciously assist those who have wanted shelter beneath the sheltering wings of your protection and loving kindness, and who have yearned for no other Lord except you. We have forsaken our homes, O Lord, in our eagerness to meet You, and in our longings to be united with You. We have travelled over land and sea to attain the court of Your presence and to give ear to Your verses. However, when we arrived at the shores of the sea, we were held back from You, as the ungodly intervened between us and the loving kindness. O Lord! Dire thirst has seized us, and with You are the soft flowing waters of eternal life. Potent are You to do what pleases You deny us not the object of our quest. Then write down for us the recompense decreed for the ones that are your assistants, that enjoy near access to you and are completely devoted to your will. Make us so steadfast in your love that nothing will keep us back from you or deter us from your adoration. Powerful are you to do your pleasure. You truly, are the source of humble goodness, and the most generous. He is in his own right the supreme ruler. The pen of the compassionate proclaims, O you who has imagined yourself to be the most exalted of men, and who have regarded as the lowest of all seekers this divine soul, you do nothing, through whom the eyes of the congregation on high has been illuminated and made radiant. You also do nothing, for this one that has wanted nothing from you or from anyone that is like you, in view of the fact that as from time immemorial, whenever the peaceful safety of God, the source of mercy, and the supporters of His unfading joy has stepped out of the realm of eternity into this mortal world and revealed themselves, to revive the dead men as these that you have considered to be sanctified souls and temples of divine oneness, on whom the needs of this age depends on the rehabilitation of the people of the earth, instead they turned out to be stirrers of mischief and workers of blame. These men truly have all returned to dust. And before long you will also take your home there and find yourself in grievous loss too. Even if this life-giver and world-reformer is in your estimation guilty of disobedience and strife, what crime could have been committed by a group of women, children, and suckling mothers, so that they should be afflicted with the scourge of your anger and wrath? No faith or religion has ever held children responsible. The pen of divine command has exempted them, you do not know the fire of your tyranny and oppression that has encompassed all. If you bear allegiance to any faith or religion, then you should know that according to all the heavenly books and all the divinely inspired and important scriptures, children are not to be held accountable. Apart from this, not even those who disbelieve in God have perpetrated such unholy acts. Because from every perception, an effect becomes seen and apparent, a fact that no one can deny except those who are deprived of reason and understanding, it is certain that the sighs of these children and the cries of these wronged ones will have their due consequence. You have plundered before and unjustly devastated a group of people who have never rebelled in your domains, nor disobeyed your government, but rather kept to themselves and engaged day and night in the memory of God. Later, when the order was issued to let them go, you did nothing, 
and all were filled with disappointment. The officials in charge of my expulsion declared that, these others have not been charged with any offense and have not been expelled by the government. Should they desire to accompany you, no one will oppose them. These helpless souls therefore paid their own expenses, forsook all their possessions, and contenting themselves with our presence and placing their whole trust in God, journeyed once again with him to the fortress of Akka, that became the prison of Baha, God in Arabic. Upon our arrival, we were surrounded by guards and confined together, men and women, young and old alike, in the army barracks. The first night all was deprived of either food or drink, because the watchman was guarding the gate of the barracks and permitted no one to leave. No one gave a thought to the predicament of these wronged ones. They even begged for water, and was refused. Time has passed, and we all remain confined in these barracks, notwithstanding that during the five years we lived in Adrianople, all its inhabitants, whether learned or ignorant, rich or poor, bore witness to the purity and sanctity of these assistants of God. At the time this happened you did nothing and was departing from Adrianople, one of the loved ones of God attempted to take his own life, so unbearable to him was the sight of this wronged one in the hands of his oppressors. During the journey, we was told three times to change ships, and it is evident how much the children suffered as a result. Upon disembarking, four of the distressers was separated and prevented from accompanying us. As to this you did nothing, and when we was leaving one of the four, that was named Abdul Ghaffar, he cast himself into the sea, and no one knows what happened to him thereafter. All of this is only a drop in the ocean of the wrongs that has been inflicted on us, and still you are not satisfied. The officials enforced every day a new decree, and no end is in sight to their tyranny. Night and day they conceive new schemes. They have assigned each prisoner, from the government storehouse, a daily allowance of three loaves of bread that no one can eat. From the foundation of the world until the present day, a cruelty such as this has neither been seen nor heard of. By the righteousness of him who has caused Baha, God, to speak forth before all that is in heaven and all that are on earth. You have neither rank nor mention among them that have offered up their souls, their bodies and their substance for the love of God, that is the source of humble good will and justice. A handful of clay is greater in the sight of God than all your dominion and your sovereignty, and all your might and your fortune. Should it be his wish, he would scatter you in the dust. Soon he will seize you in his wrathful anger, and disobedience will be stirred up in your midst, and your dominions will be disrupted. Then you will cry and grieve, and will find no one to help or comfort you. In making mention of these matters, it is not our purpose to rouse you from your slumber, since the fury of God's wrath has so encompassed you, that you will never listen. Nor is it our intention to recount the iniquities visited on these pure and blessed souls, because they have been so intoxicated with the wine of the source of mercy and are so carried away with the inebriating effect of the living waters of His loving providence that even if they were to suffer all the cruelties of the world for His sake, they would remain content and give, thanks to Him. These souls have never held, nor will they ever hold any grievance. No, their blood continually implores and begs the Lord of the worlds, so that it might be spilt upon the dust in His path and their heads yearn to be put high on spears for the sake of the beloved of minds and souls. Several times disasters have overtaken you, but you do not know that it was of God, yet you failed to speak or to listen to us. One of them was the fire that consumed most of the city with the flames of moral correctness, and concerning that many a poems were written, stating that no such fire had ever been witnessed. But you do not know, that you have become more like the ones that refuse to listen to their Lord. Plague broke out, and you still failed to listen or to be expectant of the day of judgment, that is because the wrath of God is ready to overtake you. Before long you will see what has been sent down from the pen of my command. You have naively imagined your joy to be imperishable and your dominion to be everlasting? No, by him who is the source of mercy. Neither will your joy last, nor will my humiliation endure. Such humbleness, in the estimation of a true man, is the pride of every glory. When I was still a child and had not attained the age of maturity, my father made arrangements in Tyron for the marriage of one of my older brothers, and as is customary in that city, the festivities lasted for seven days and nights. On the last day it was announced that the play Shah Sultan Salim would be presented. A large number of princes, dignitaries, and nobles of the capital gathered for the occasion. I was sitting in one of the upper rooms of the building observing the scene. Presently a tent was being pitched in the courtyard, and before long some small human-like figures, each appearing to be no more than about a hand span in height, 
were seen to emerge from it and raise the call, His Majesty is coming. Arrange the seats at once. Other figures then came forth, some of whom were seen to be engaged in sweeping, others in sprinkling water, and thereafter another, who was announced as the chief and town crier, raised his call and bade the people to assemble for an audience with the king. Next, several groups of figures made their appearance and took their places, the first attired in hats and sashes after the Persian fashion, the second wielding battle-axes, and the third comprising a number of footmen and executioners carrying bastionado sticks for flogging. Finally, there appeared in grand majesty and crown with a royal crown, a kingly figure, bearing himself with the utmost splendor and grandeur, at turns advancing and pausing in his progress, who proceeded with great solemnity, poise and dignity to seat himself on his throne. At that moment a blast of shots was fired, an array of trumpets was sounded, and king and tent was enveloped in a cloud of smoke. When it had cleared, the king, settled on his throne, was seen surrounded by a suite of ministers, princes, and dignitaries of state, who having taken their places were standing at attention in his presence. A captured thief was then brought before the king, who gave the order that the offender should be beheaded. Without a moment's delay the chief executioner cut off the thief's head, to where a blood like liquid came forth. After this the king held audience with his court officers, during which a message was received that a rebellion had broke out on a certain frontier. Then the king reviewed his troops and dispatched several regiments that was supported by artillery, to quell the uprising. A few moments later cannons was heard booming from behind the tent, and it was announced that a battle had been engaged. But you did nothing and regarded the scene with great amazement. When the royal audience had ended, the curtain was drawn and after some twenty minutes, a man emerged from behind the tent carrying a box under his arm. What is this box? I asked him, and what was the nature of this display? All this lavish display and these elaborate devices, he replied, the king, the princes, and the ministers, all their pomp and glory, their might, majesty, and power, everything you saw, are now contained within this box. I swear by my Lord, who through a single word of his mouth has brought into being all created things. Ever since that day, all the trappings of the world have seemed, in the eyes of the subjects, that you do nothing about events that are similar to that same spectacle. They have never been, nor will they ever be, of any importance and consequence to you, rather it is to the extent of a grain of mustard seed. How great I have marveled, that men should pride themselves on such vanities, while those possessed of insight, before they witness any evidence of human glory, perceive with certainty the inevitability of its warning. Never have I looked on anything like this except that I have seen extinction before, and God truly is a sufficient witness. It benefits everyone to travel over this brief span of life with sincerity and fairness. Should one fail to attain to the recognition of him who is the eternal truth, let him at least conduct himself with reason and moral correctness. Before long these outward trappings, these visible treasures, these earthly vanities, these array of armies, these adorned garments, these proud and overwhelming souls, all will pass into the confines of the grave, as though they are in that box to be saved. In the eyes of those possessed of insight, all of this conflict, contention, and arrogance has forever been, and will forever be like the play and pastimes of children. You listen, so that you do not become one of them that cannot see into the spiritual realms and so that you do not deny yourself of spiritual realities. Our call concerns this, you do nothing and the loved ones of God suffer, but they are already sorely tried and imprisoned and expect nothing from men such as you. Our purpose is that you may lift up your head from the couch of thoughtlessness, shake off the slumber of negligence, and cease to oppose unjustly the assistance of God. So long as your good will and goodness endures, you strive to alleviate the suffering of the oppressed. Should you judge with fairness and observe with the eye of discernment the conflicts and pursuits of this fleeting world, you would readily acknowledge that they are like the play of children that we have described. Listen to the words of the one true God and do not pride yourself in the things of this world. Think what has become of those like you, who falsely claimed lordship on earth, who wanted to quench the light of the love of God in his land, and to destroy the foundation of his almighty buildings in his cities. Where are they all to be seen now? Be fair in your judgment and return to God, so that by perchance he might cancel the trespasses of your vain and selfish life. Although, we know that you will never attain to this, because this is your cruelty that has been made into a hell, that has turned into a blaze and has caused the spirit to be grieved and has caused the pillars of the throne to shake and the minds of the faithful to tremble. O people of the earth! 
incline your inner ears to the call of this wronged one and pause to reflect on the message that we have recounted. So that by perchance you may not be consumed by the fire of self and passion, nor allow the arrogant and worthless objects of this lower nether world to withhold you from him who is the eternal truth. Joy and humiliation, riches and poverty, peace and suffering, all will pass away, and all the people of the earth will before long be laid to rest in their tombs. Therefore, it benefits every man of insight to fix his gaze on the goal of eternity, so that by perchance the grace of him, who is the ancient king may attain to the immortal kingdom and live beneath the shade of the tree of his revelation. Though this world is a frightening thing, with deception and deceit, yet you do not know that it is continually warning all men of their impending extinction. The death of the father proclaims to the son that he will pass away. I wish that the inhabitants of the world who has collected riches for themselves and have strayed far from the true one would listen, so that they might know who will eventually lay hands on their treasures, but by the life of Baha, God, no one knows this except God, exalted is His glory. The poet Sinai, may God's mercy rest on him, has said, Listen, O you whose unseemly conduct has darkened your faces. Listen, O you whose beards have been whitened by age. Alas, most of the people are fast asleep. They are even as the man who, in his drunkenness, became attracted to a dog, took it in his embrace, and made it his plaything, and who, when the morning of discernment dawned and the light of the sun enveloped the horizon, he realized that the object of his affection was only a dog. Then, filled with shame and remorse, he returned to his home. Do not think that you have been humbled because you did nothing, or do you think that you have prevailed over him? The least of my seekers rules over you, and you do not even perceive it. The lowliest and most degraded of all things holds good will over you, that is no other than self and passion, that has forever been seen as disgraceful. If it was not for God's consummate wisdom, you would have been able to plainly see your own helplessness and the helplessness of all who live on earth. Our humbleness is indeed the joy of His perception, if you could only understand. You do nothing that will ever make you reluctant to breathe a word contrary to courtesy because courtesy is our garments, wherewith it we have adorned the temples of our kind assistance of God. Otherwise, some of the deeds that you believe to be concealed would have been divulged in this tablet. O defenders of humble goodness! These young children and these poor ones in God did not need to be accompanied by officers and soldiers. Upon our arrival in Gallipoli, a major by the name of Umar came into our presence. God is well aware of what he said. After some exchanges in which his own innocence and your guilt was mentioned, we declared, from the onset, a gathering should have been assembled, at which the learned men of this age could have met with me, but you did nothing in order to determine what offence these assistants of God has committed. But now the matter has gone far beyond such considerations, and according to your own declaration, you are charged with incarcerating us in the most desolate of cities. There is a matter, that if you find it possible, I request you to submit to His Majesty the Sultan a meeting with me, so that for ten minutes you do nothing but be enabled to meet him with me, so that I may demand whatsoever he deems as a sufficient testimony and regard it as proof of the truthfulness of him who is the truth. Should God enable him to produce it, let him then, release these wronged ones, and leave them to themselves. He promised to transmit this message, and to give us his reply. However, we received no news from him. Although it becomes him not who is the truth, to present himself before any person, in view of the fact that all have been created to obey him, but because of the conditions of these little children and the large number of women that was so far removed from their companions in God and countries, we have permitted in this matter, even though nothing has resulted, if Umar himself is alive and accessible. You must inquire from him what has happened, so that the truth may be made known to you. Most of our companions now lie sick in this prison and no one knows what happened to us, except God, that is the source of humble goodness, and the source of knowledge. In the days following our arrival, two of these that trust in God ran to the realms above. For an entire day the guards insisted that, until they were paid for the shrouds and burial, those blessed bodies could not be removed, although no one had requested any help from them. At that time we were devoid of earthly means, and pleaded that they leave the matter to us and allow those present to carry the bodies, but they refused. Finally, a carpet was taken to the bazaar to be sold, and the sum obtained was delivered to the guards. Later, it was learned that they had before dug a shallow grave into which they had placed both blessed bodies, although they had taken twice the amount required for shrouds and burial. 
The pen is powerless to depict and the tongue is distressed to describe the trials that we have suffered. You do not know it but sweeter than honey to me is the bitterness of such tribulations. In view of it every instant all the afflictions of the world could, in the path of God and for the sake of His love, be visited on this vanishing soul, who would still be immersed in the ocean of divine knowledge. We implore God for patience and tolerance, in view of the fact that as you are only a feeble creature and deprived of comprehension. Were you to awaken and inhale the fragrance of the breezes that blows from the retreats of eternity, you would readily abandon all that you possess and the things that you rejoice in, and choose to live in one of the dilapidated rooms of this most great prison. Beg God to grant you such mature understanding as to enable you to distinguish your praiseworthy actions from those that deserve blame. Peace be upon him who follows the way of guidance. He is the source of joyful innocence. Calf. Zah we call to you from beyond the sea of joy, upon the crimson land, above the horizon of tribulation. Truly, no God is there except Him, that is the source of humble goodness, and the source of kindness. You walk steadfastly in my perception and follow not in the ways of those who, upon attaining to the object of their desire, denied God, the Lord of Lords. Before long He will lay hold on them in His wrath, because He truly is the source of power and strength. You know that through the power of His exaltation and might, God has seized him who was the foremost among them that passed judgment against us. When he saw his torment approaching, he fled to Paris to seek help from physicians. This is what God caused to happen, is there no one to help me? He asked. He was slapped on the mouth and told, there is no escape. And when he turned towards the angel of wrath, he well near expired from fear. I have a house full of riches, he pleaded. I have a palace on the Bosphorus, beneath which the rivers flow. The angel replied, No ransom will be accepted from you on this day, even if you could offer up all things visible and invisible. You did not mind the size of the family of God, whom you did cast into prison, without you not having any proof or testimonies. Your deed has provoked the grievance of the inmates of paradise, and of those who circle morning and evening around the throne on high. The wrath of your Lord has descended upon you, and stern is he in his punishment. He made reply, I held command over the people and it was the mandate of my authority. They replied, Hold your peace, O denier of the day of judgment. He implored, Is no relief possible so that I may send for my family? They said, Far from it, O disbeliever in the verses of God. Thereupon the keepers of the comprehendless abyss called to him, The gates of hell has opened wide to receive you, O you who have turned away from your Lord, that is the unconstrained. Rest in its fire, because it longs after you. Have you forgotten, O rejected one, when you was the Nimrod of the age, how your tyranny eclipsed the very cruelties of Pharaoh, the Lord of the stakes. By God! Your sinfulness has ripped apart the veil of peace, and has caused the pillars of heaven to tremble. Where can you find shelter now? Who will protect you from the dreadful scourge of your Lord, that is the source of justice? There is no haven for you in this day, O ungodly doubter! Where the agony of death seized him and he saw no more. Then we did lay hold on him in our wrathful anger, and we served before your Lord in his punishment. Then an angel from the right hand of the throne summoned him, See the angel of affliction. Is there any place to run to except hell, it is where the mind is strained to the point that it boils? And the angel of punishment received his spirit, and a voice proclaimed, Enter the bottomless pit that has been promised in the book of God, and whose existence you did deny day and night. Soon we will dismiss the one who was like to him and will lay hold on their chief who rules the land, I truly am the representative for the source of humble goodness, that is the justified one. You be steadfast in the perception of God and praise your Lord morning and evening. Suffer not the light of the love of your soul to be quenched by the slander of the one who was so blinded by our gifts as to turn away from God, that is the Lord of all names. He inspires his devoted followers evening and night as to the evil one's promptings. Before long you will see him in obvious loss, both in this world and in the world to come. He indeed, is among those whom an agonizing torment does await. He dispatched an epistle to someone in that land, that was a steward of the workers of sinfulness, in which he mocked God and recorded what filled all created things with disappointment. Say, you cannot find anyone to protect you when the wrath of God, that is the source of will, and the unconstrained, is visited upon you? So we have informed you of what lies concealed within the minds of men. Truly, your Lord is the source of humble goodness, and the source of knowledge. Rise for the triumph of this perception, and gather together my loved ones. 
help them to see the truth in this day, when the feet of men have slipped. Say, it benefits every true believer morning and evening to assist his Lord. He truly is your assistant, while the people have no one to turn to in this day. Then we seized mighty the Antichrist, to whom we had promised divine punishment in our books and scriptures. When our powerful majesty encompassed him, he pleaded, May I not retrace my steps? A voice exclaimed, What happens to you, O disbeliever in the day of the resurrection of God? This is the nethermost fire, and its flames have been made to blaze for you. You did forsake all righteous deeds in your vain and futile life, and now you have none to shield you from God. You are indeed He who caused all minds to be consumed, and the Holy Spirit to grieve morning and evening. He pleaded, Is there not no shelter for me? They said, No, by my Lord, if you should seek help by any other possible means it will be blocked. Then he cried out in such distress as to cause the people of the graves to tremble, and was seized by the hand of invincible good will. A voice then proclaimed, Return to the seat of wrath and the fire of hell, miserable and evil is your home. Then we did lay hold on him as we laid hold on those who preceded him. See their houses that we have left to the spiders, and listen, O you who are endued with understanding. It is he who opposed God, and for whom the verses of wrath were revealed in the book of God. Blessed is he who reads it and meditates on its contents, because a good end does in truth await him. The book of God is the verses that has been sent down from God to the current messenger. Then we have recounted to you the tale of the evildoers, so that your eyes may be comforted. As for you, there lies in store nothing but a blissful end. He is the source of humble goodness. This is a tablet from this assistant, who is called Hussein in the kingdom of names, to the congregation of the kings of the earth so that happily they may approach it in a spirit of open-mindedness, and discover from its message the mysteries of divine providence, and be of those that comprehend its meaning, and so that by perchance they may forsake all they possess and turn towards the retreats of holiness, then draw near to God, that is the source of joy and knowledge. O kings of the earth! Give ear to the voice of God, that is calling from this kindly and fruit-laden tree, that has sprung out of the crimson hill of the earth's blood, on the holy plain of the spiritual world chanting the words, There is no other God but Him, the source of all ways of loving kindness. This is a spot that has been sanctified by God for those who approach it, a spot where His voice may be heard from the celestial tree of holiness. Fear disobeying God, O congregation of kings, and suffer not yourselves to be deprived of this most loving mercy. Then give away the things that you possess, and take a fast hold on the handle of God, that is the source of loving kindness. Set your minds towards the face of God, and abandon what your desires have ordered you to follow, and be not of those who perish through selfishness. Relate to them, O assistant of God, the story of Ali, when he came to them with truth, bearing his glorious and weighty book, and holding in his hands a testimony and proof from God, that are these holy and blessed tokens from him. O kings, you have failed to listen to the memory of God in his days and to be guided by the lights that rose and shined forth above the horizon of a splendid heaven. You do assist his perception, because when you do so, it will be better for you than all that the sun shines on earth, if you could only perceive it. You remained careless until the divines of Persia, those cruel ones pronounced judgment against him, and unjustly slew him. His spirit ascended to God, and the eyes of the inmates of paradise, and the angels that are near to him wept sore by reason of this cruelty. Beware that you are not careless from now on, as you have been careless in the past. Then return to God, your Maker, and be not of the ones that refuse to listen. Say, the sun of Vyskarin has dawned, and the point of knowledge and wisdom has been made plain, and the testimony of God, the source of all ways of humble goodness, which are compassion, empathy, and sympathy, has been made seen. Say, the moon of eternity has risen in the midmost heaven, and its light has illuminated the inhabitants of the realms above. My face has come forth from the veils, and shed its radiance upon all that is in heaven and on earth, but you do not know it, because you did not turn towards Him, but you do not understand that you were created for Him, O congregations of kings. Therefore, follow what I have said to you, and listen to it with your mind, and be not of the kind that is turned away. Because your joy consists not in your sovereignty, but rather in your nearness to God and your observance of His commandments that has been sent down in His holy and preserved tablets. Should any one of you rule over the whole earth, and over all that lies within it and upon it, its seas, its lands, its mountains, and its plains, and you do not obey God and are not remembered by Him, all these things will not profit you, 
if you could only know it. You know that an assistant's joy lives in his nearness to God, and unless he draws near to him, nothing else can profit him, even if he should hold rule over the entire creation. Say, the breeze of God has been blown over you from the retreats of paradise, but you have neglected it and chosen to persist in your selfishness. Guidance has been given to you from God, but you have failed to follow it and preferred to reject its truth. The lamp of God has been lit within the niche of His perception, but you have neglected to seek the radiance of its joy and to draw near to its light. And still you slumber upon the couch of thoughtlessness. Arise then, and make steadfast your feet, and make your amends for what has escaped you, and then set yourselves towards His holy court, on the shores of His mighty ocean, so that the pearls of knowledge and wisdom, that God has stored up within the shell of His radiant mind, that may be revealed to you. This is the counsel that will profit you most, make of it your provision, so that you may be of those who are guided in the right way. You wear unless you block the breeze of God from blowing over your minds, the breeze through which the minds of such as have turned to Him, that can be revived. Listen to the clear admonitions that we have revealed for you in this tablet, so that God, in turn may listen to you and may open before your faces the portals of His mercy. He truly is the compassionate, and the merciful. Do not lay away the fear of disobeying God, O kings of the earth, and beware that you do not transgress the bounds that the source of humble goodness has fixed. Observe the commands laid on you in His book, and take good caution not to overstep their limits. Be vigilant, so that you may not do immoral incorrectness to anyone, be it to the extent of a grain of mustard seed. You walk the path of moral correctness, because this truly is the straight path. Correct your differences and reduce your weapons, so that the burden of your conflicts may be lightened, and so that your minds and others' minds may be tranquilized. Heal the disagreements that divide you, then you will no longer be in need of any armaments except for the protection of your cities and territories. You fear disobeying God, and listen to what I say, do not overstep the bounds of moderation and then be numbered among the extravagant and wasteful. We have learned that you are increasing your expenditures, and are laying the burden of the expenses on your subjects. This truly is more than they can bear, and is a grievous immoral incorrectness. Decide justly between men, O kings, and you be the emblems of moral correctness among them. If you judge fairly, they will judge fairly, this is the thing that benefits you and your station. You were not to deal unjustly with anyone that appeals to you and enters beneath your shadow. You walk in the fear of displeasing God, and you be of them that lead a godly life. Rest not on your good will, your armies, or your treasures. Put your whole trust and confidence in God, who has created you, and you seek His help in all your affairs. Comfort comes from Him alone. He comforts whom He wills with the hosts of the heavens and of the earth. You know that the poor are the trust of God in your midst. Watch that you do not betray His trust, and that you deal not unjustly with them, and that you walk not in the ways of the treacherous. You most certainly will be called on to answer for His trust on the day when the balance of moral correctness will be set, the day when everyone will be judged, when the doings of all men, rather they are rich or poor, will be weighed and His due rewards will be dished out. If you pay no attention to the counsels, that is in such matchless and apparent language, that we have revealed in this tablet, a divine punishment will attack you from every direction, and the sentence of His moral correctness will be pronounced against you. On that day you will have no good will to resist Him, and will recognize your own impotence. Have mercy on yourselves and on those beneath you, and you judge between them according to the precepts prescribed by God in His most holy and exalted tablet, a tablet wherein it He has assigned to each and every thing its settled measure, in which He has given with distinctness an explanation of all things, and that is in itself a warning to them that believe in Him. Examine our perception, inquire into the things that has happened us, and decide justly between us and our enemies, and you be of them that act equitably towards their neighbor. If you do not stop the hand of the oppressor, if you fail to safeguard the rights of the downtrodden, then what right do you have to brag about yourselves among men? What is it that you can rightly boast about? Is it about your food and your drink that you pride yourselves in, about the riches you lay up in your treasuries, or about the diversity and the cost of the ornaments with which you deck yourselves in? If true joy was to consist in the possession of such perishable things, then the earth on which you walk must need to brag about itself over you, because it supplies for you, and bestows on you these very things, by the decree of God, the source of humble goodness. In its bowels are contained, according to what God has commanded, all that you possess. From it, is a sign of His mercy that you derive your riches from. See then your state, and the things that you joy in.
it is hopeful that you can perceive it. No, by him who holds in his grasp the kingdom of the entire creation. No where does your true and living joy live, except in your firm adherence to the precepts of God, observe with all of your mind as laws, your resolution is to see that they do not remain unenforced, and to pursue steadfastly the right course of action. O kings of Christendom! Did you not hear the saying of Christ, by the Spirit of God, I go away and come again to you? Then, when He did come again to you in the clouds of heaven, you failed to draw near to Him, so that you might see His face, and be of them that attained His presence. In another passage He said, When He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. But you do not see how when He did bring the truth to you, you refused to turn your faces towards Him, and persisted in amusing yourselves with your pastimes and fantasies. You did not welcome Him, neither did you seek His presence so that you might hear the verses of God from His own mouth, and partake of the manifold wisdom of the source of humble goodness, the source of joy, and the source of all ways. You have by reason of your failure to listen, you prevented the breath of God from being blowed over you, and have withheld from your souls the sweetness of its fragrance. You continue roving with delight in the valley of your corrupt desires. By God! You and all you possess will pass away. You will most certainly return to God, and will be called to account for your doings in the presence of Him, who will gather together the entire creation. Again, you did not hear what has been recorded in the Gospel concerning those that were born not of blood, nor of the will, nor of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God, who are those who have been made to see through the good will of God. Wherefore it becomes evident that one may well be seen in the world of creation who is truly of God, the source of all the paths of knowledge of humble goodness. How is it then that when word reached you of our perception, you failed to inquire from our own lips, so that through goodness you might distinguish truth from falsehood, discover our aim and purpose, and learn of the afflictions that we have suffered at the hands of an evil and wayward generation. O minister of the King of Paris! You have forgotten the pronouncement recorded in the Gospel according to John concerning the Word, and of those who are its peaceful trust? And you have ignored the counsels of the Spirit concerning the peaceful safety of the Word, and have been numbered with the ones that refuse to listen? If not, then why did you conspire with the minister of Persia to inflict on us what has caused the minds of men of insight and understanding to melt, and the tears of the denizens of the realm of eternity to flow, and the souls of them who are near to God to mourn? And all this you committed without you not even seeking to examine our perception, or to discern its truths. It is your clear duty to learn this perception, to inform yourself of the things that have happened us, to judge with equality, and to hold on to moral correctness? Your days will pass away, your ministry will come to an end, and your possessions will vanish and be no more. Then, in the presence of the source of humble goodness King, you will be called to answer for what your hands have constructed. How many are the ministers who have came before you into this world, men who exceeded you in good will, excelled you in station, and surpassed you in wealth? but you do not know that you will be returned to dust, leaving on the face of the earth neither name nor trace, and now you are plunged in grievous remorse. Among them were those who failed in their duty towards God, that follow their own desires, and walk the path of lust and wickedness. And among them was those who observed what has been prescribed in the verses of God, as judged with fairness by the divine guidance that overshadowed them, and have entered beneath the shelter of the mercy of their Lord. I encourage you and those who are like you, to deal not with anyone as you have dealt with us. You wear unless you follow in the footsteps of the evil one and walk in the ways of the unjust. Take from this world only to the measure of your needs, and do without what exceeds them. Observe equality in all your judgments, and transgress not the bounds of moral correctness, nor be of them that stray from the path of God. Twenty years have passed, O kings, during which we have each day tasted the agony of a fresh tribulation. Not one of them that was before us has endured the things we have endured. If only you could perceive it. They that rose up against us have put us to death, have shed our blood, have plundered our property, and violated our honour. Though you are aware of most of our afflictions, you nevertheless have failed to stop the hand of the aggressor. Is it your clear duty to restrain the tyranny of the oppressor, and to deal equitably with your subjects, so that your high sense of moral correctness may be fully demonstrated to all mankind? God has entrusted into your hands the restraints of the government of the people, so that you may rule with moral correctness over them, safeguard the rights of the downtrodden, and punish the wrongdoers. If you neglect the duty prescribed to you by God in His book, your names will be numbered with those of the unjust in His sight.
grievous indeed, will be your error. You have held on to what your imaginations have devised, and have turned your backs on the commandments of God, who is the highest perception, and the source of humble goodness and justice. Cast away the things you possess, and cling to what God has ordered you to observe. You seek His grace, because He that seeks it, walks His straight path. Consider the state in which we are in, and you see the ills and troubles that have tried us. Neglect us not, though it is only for a moment, and you judge between us and our enemies with equality. This will surely be seen as an advantage to you. We did relate to you our message, and recounted the things that has happened to us, so that you might take off our ills, and ease our burdens. Let him who will relieve us morning and evening from our troubles, and as to him that does not want to, my Lord is assuredly the best of assistance. Warn and educate the people, O assistant of God, with the things we have sent down to you, and let the fear of no one disappoint you, and you be not of them that fear anything or anyone except, fear disobeying God. The day is approaching when God will have exalted His perception and magnified His testimony in the eyes of all who are in the heavens and all who are on the earth. In all circumstances place your whole trust in your Lord, and fix your gaze on Him, and turn away from all them that reject His truth. Let God, that your Lord represents, be your sufficient comforter and assistant. We have pledged ourselves to secure your triumph on earth and to exalt our perception above all men, though no king is found who would turn his face towards you. You call to memory your arrival in the city, how the ministers of the Sultan thought you to be unacquainted with their laws and regulations, and believed you to be one of the ignorant. Say, you by my Lord. I am ignorant of all things, except what God through His generous kindness has been pleased to teach me. This we assuredly testify to, and unhesitatingly confess it. Say, if the laws and regulations to which you hold on to are of your own making, we will in no way follow them. Then I have been instructed by Him who is God, the source of all paths of reason. This has been my way in the past, and it will remain my way in the future, through the good will of God and His might. This indeed is the true and right way and proof of our obedience to God. If you are commanded by God to bring forth righteousness, then your proof is in your obedience or disobedience to God, if you are of them that speak the truth. Say, we have written down in the book of God that does not leave unrecorded the work of any man, of how insignificant all that they have imparted to you is, and all that they have done for you. Say, it benefits you, O ministers of the state, to keep the precepts of God, and to forsake your own laws and regulations, and to be of them who are guided in the right way. This is better for you than all that you possess, if you could only know it.